Uh, hello, um, my name is Deontay Cassette. I'm here to do my gospel presentation. So I hope you like it. <laughs> Start off with creation. Took God six days to make everything that populates this earth. Took him six days. Five of those days, it took him to create the things that's on earth, water, trees, the sun, the moon, time. He creates all of that in five days. But on the sixth day, he creates animals. The most important, he creates human, mankind. This guy by the name of Adam, God creates first. The Bible says he formed him. He creates Adam. He creates him, according to the Bible, in his image, in likeness. Him, Adam, and God shares identity or DNA. Because now God has gave Adam part of him. Not only did God created Adam, but from Adam came Eve. And the, that was the six days of creation. The next is the fall. The next chapter, Genesis chapter 3, right in God's presence, right in the Garden of Eden, here is Satan. Satan is in the Garden of Eden, in the presence of God. And he decides to have a conversation with Eve, trying to persuade her to Take a bite of the fruit. He tells her, hey, nothing's going to happen to you. God, God said you'll surely die. What? No. But you will be more like him. So disappointing that she took a bite of the fruit. And next she hands the fruit. To Adam, he bites, he chews, he swallows, he digests the very thing that God told him not to eat. Then the Bible says, and their eyes were open. Now they know the difference between good and evil. The next point that I want to talk about is the promise or the covenant. Uh, I want to suggest one thing that there was a promise in Genesis that the seed of Eve will crush the head of the serpent. But the serpent will attack the heel of the sea. But the promise and the covenant, because there are multiple covenants in the Bible, but the, the covenant that I want to speak about now is starts in Genesis chapter 12, verse one through three. 
It begins with this guy by the name of Abraham. Or Abram, I suggest. God told him that, hey, look, I'm going I'm to make your name great. And uh, not only am I going to make your name great, but you will be a father over many nations. Not, not only did he tell them that, right? Not only did he tell them that, uh, but then he tells them that all the nations on earth will be blessed because of Abraham. And that still stands today. That every nation will be blessed because of Abraham. And the promise leads me into the prophecy of the Old Testament record. The prophecy was spoken of by the prophets of the Old Testament. They were God's mouthpiece. And so they would tell Israel, hey, um, Israel, turn away from your sin and turn back to the creator. Turn back to God. I'm sorry, my voice. Turn back to God. But not only would they tell Israel uh, uh, to turn away from the idolatry and all their sinful nature and to turn to God, but they were also pointing to the Messiah. God by the name of uh, uh, Isaiah. He, he uh, prophesied or gave a prophecy. Over the Messiah. Check this out. There's three things. Uh, Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Isaiah chapter 53. 3 to 4. He gives. The prophecy of the Messiah. He tells us about the coming. Of the Messiah. But not only does he tell us about the coming of the Messiah. But we await for him to appear or to come into revelation. And that runs into uh, the virgin birth. It runs into the virgin birth. Mary, which is Jesus' mother. Joseph, which is Jesus' stepdaddy. God, which is Jesus' is daddy. Talks about the virgin birth. This is important. Because the virgin birth. It also represents his deity. The virgin birth talks about Jesus being human. That he came from a woman. Just like incarnation, uh, this word incarnation came from the Latin. It really means to be human. So all through scripture you see uh, Jesus' characteristics. You see him angry. You see him weeping. You see him crying. You see all the characteristics of Jesus in scripture. That lets you know he was human. Not only that, but John chapter 1 verse 14 says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus was human. He was 100% human. But also he was 100% divine. Meaning Jesus is God. He's God. So yes, he's 100% human and 100% God. 
Let's talk about Jesus' life. His life. At a young boy sitting at tables with wise men of his time. Discussing about his father's business. But, but not, not only do we see him as a child, but we see him at the age of 30. Uh, 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 we see him. Doing miracles. We see him. Spitting. On a man's eyes. Uh, we see him. Raising the dead. We see him. Turn a dumb man. And now he's healed. We see in the Bible. Where he fed 5,000 people. And then there was a scripture in the Bible that says uh, there was more miracles that he done. But it wasn't recorded. I talked to you about his life. But then I must talk about his death. That Jesus was the ransom. Who took all of our sins and took it on the cross? At the cross is where they knelt his hands, where they knelt his feet, and they pierced him in the side, and they they put a crown of thorns on his head. And the Bible says he died. But just like he told uh, told the people in three days. I rise up again. And shortly, three days later, Jesus rise from the grave. The Bible said with all power that he had. But he took my sins and he hung it on the cross. Man, this is getting real to me. He hung it on the cross. Instead, it should have been me. But he he substituted me for him. And so now, since he died for me, I must live for him. Let me move on. He's risen. But not only did he rise, but he went back to the father to sit right back at the right hand of his father. And now he is the mediator between God the father and me. But it was important. This is important because when Jesus leaves, we have nobody. No God. But Jesus said, hey, the Holy Spirit is coming. And because I was only I was only human, I only can be at one place at one time. I'm going to allow my Holy Spirit to come in. And now I will be placed in all of you. Jesus extends. Some of the prophecies was not fulfilled. And so that's why it has to be a second coming. It has to be a second coming. Jesus is going to come back. Win. Be victorious over Satan. And he's going to reconcile. All of his people. Back to the father. Back to the creator. Just like the original plan. And Eden. And God. Will become king. Once again. God bless you.